In this video from Learn Electrics, we will look at the condition codes that are used when completing an electrical installation condition report or EICR. What code should I put for this or that? Is there an easy way to work it out? So let me show you how I look at it. Let's establish a starting point. When carrying out an inspection and test on an existing installation, we may make an observation that something is not right, and a condition code is a ranking number to indicate the level of danger that may be present with that particular observation. It is the inspector's job to identify defects and problems and to allocate a condition code. It is not the inspector's job to repair it. Inspecting is not repairing, although you may be asked to quote separately for the repairs. And then, once notified of the observations in writing, either by hand or electronic, it is the customer's duty to arrange for appropriate remedial action. On the EICR reporting sheet, you will record any observations and allocate to them a code number that indicates, in your opinion, the level of danger of electric shock or risk of fire. You will then make a recommendation. Is the installation in a satisfactory condition and deemed safe for continued use, or the installation is unsatisfactory because one or more safety issues have been observed. Any C1 or C2 code will automatically deem the installation unsatisfactory, as will an FI or further investigation code, as this may lead to a C1 or a C2. Only C3s or no observations at all will allow us to class the installation as satisfactory. An unsatisfactory installation can continue in use at the customer's risk, not the inspector's, if the customer takes appropriate steps to control the risk until the problem is repaired or dealt with. Such repairs must be carried out in a timely fashion. Let's look at some of these codes. A C1 is an automatic fail and will make the installation unsatisfactory. Danger is present, there is a risk of injury or of fire, and immediate remedial action is required. In other words, a danger exists right now. There is a very great risk of electric shock, and steps need to be taken to remove the danger right now. It might be as simple as disconnecting the circuit. This situation cannot be ignored. On this page, we've shown some of the things that may trigger a C1 observation. Pause the video and take a moment to consider them. They all have one thing in common. Think of just one action being needed to receive an electric shock. Put your finger through the gap in the consumer unit and touch a live part. Just one action. Touch that exposed cable that is sticking out of the light switch. Just one action. C1, one action to get an electric shock. Looking at the C2 type, this is also an automatic fail. It is classed as potentially dangerous and urgent remedial action is required. There might be no danger of electric shock right now at this moment, but if a fault developed, there is then a danger of electric shock. If a fault occurred that is outside the property and the customer receives an electric shock because they are still on the general mass of earth, this could be fatal. Let's look at this. An example would be a situation where there is no RCD for outside sockets and the customer has plugged in their electric lawnmower. The customer is not actually in danger whilst things are normal. But should the user cut through the cable, the ends of the cable may remain live, especially if this is plugged into a 32 amp circuit breaker. This actually happened a few years ago. The gentleman concerned bent down to pick up the cut cable and received a fatal electric shock, dead. His wife saw what had happened and rushed out of the house to help him. She moved the cable from his hands, electric shock, she was dead too. Some other examples are displayed here. Again, pause the video and take the time to read through them. Think of C2 as needing two things to happen. C2, two. The customer receives an electric shock because the customer cuts through the mower cable and because there is no RCD installed, the current is not disconnected before the user touches it. C2. Two things must happen to get an electric shock. 
FI is also a fail. FI stands for Further Investigation Required. Further investigation without delay. There could be a dangerous situation of C1 or C2 and only by investigating further will we know. Without delay means investigate within days, not weeks. People could be in danger. A live cable may disappear into inaccessible areas and not reappear anywhere obvious. You may suspect that mixed devices in a consumer unit may not be compatible and you want to check further. Use FI where doubt exists as to the safety of a circuit but limitations and circumstances prevent a full investigation at that moment. Especially where the inspector suspects the outcome may be a C1 or C2 observation code. A C3 is improvement recommended. Whilst not dangerous, this situation is not to a current standard and should be improved. Quite often, this occurs when an older installation was installed to a previous edition of the regulations and still conforms to that older version, but it does not comply with the latest editions or amendments. It's a caution, really. There are opportunities for improvement. And here are a few examples of C3 codes to consider. And that is a brief overview of the coding. C1, just one action. Touch that live wire, one action, touch electric shock. C2, two actions. Something goes wrong and the protected device does not operate and then you grab hold of it. Two things, it goes wrong and then you touch it. And FI, these may lead to a C1 or a C2. Any of the above will make an installation unsatisfactory. Only if any observations are C3 only, or there are no observations, can we say that the installation is satisfactory. And there we are. We hope that you found this short video helpful and informative. Thank you for watching this video. It is very much appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos, and remember to click on Notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching and we hope to see you again very soon.